morning everybody. This morning I am looking for a cave. Kind of. It's more of a carved out cliff. About a month ago I saw a photograph on social media and somebody had been walking along the beach here and they found a part of the cliff that had eroded so much that you could actually go in and out and the water was actually going underneath the cliff. So it's not something I'd ever seen before and I've been down to this location so many times. So I'm intrigued. Today is about location scouting and then I'll probably come back at the perfect timing. Now to help you get your bearings, behind me on the cliff up here, they are the Coast Guard cottages, the famous Coast Guard cottages. Uh, if you were to go round the corner of that cliff, you'd get to Hope Gap. I'm on the beach with the Cookmere River behind me and I'm heading east along the beach and most importantly, it's low tide. I'm not gonna get cut off by the river. So I've coincided sunrise with low tide. Even though today is not about the photography as such, it's more to do with location scouting. I thought if it is good conditions, I might be able to get some photographs at the same time. Let's go. Now in search of the caves, I actually went to Hope Gap last week and the reason being is because the example image that I saw had Bella Toot Lighthouse in the background. However, because that lighthouse is so prominent, it's on one of the tallest cliffs around, you can see it from most places, So, uh, but they were not the caves that I was looking for. So on that basis, I figured they must be further along here. But when I did go to Hope Gap, I actually took some photographs with my camera and in the distance, I could see a few dark arches in the distance. So I think that the caves are between, and if you were to number the Seven Sisters, which they do, and they've each got individual names, I believe that the arches are actually between number two and three, which means that I shouldn't have more than a mile to walk. But take into consideration, to get down to the beach is about half a mile to maybe three quarters of a mile from the car park itself. And uh, I slightly cheated. What I did was I put a fold up bike in my car and I cycled all the way from the car park down to the beach. I've stashed my bike in a hedge in the hope that it's there when I get back. But let's just, let's face it, it's six o'clock in the morning. I don't think there's anybody else around, but if there are, hey, I might be walking back to my car. Let's find out. I think I found her. <gasps> there she is. She's real. to doubt whether or not this is just Photoshop. And the answer to your question is no, there is no shortcut here and you cannot get down to the beach from the cliff top, except for at Berlin Gap, which is probably another mile that way, or maybe half a mile to a mile west of here at Cookmere River. There is no shortcut, unfortunately. You're gonna to have to put on some walking boots, come here at low tide, and just enjoy the walk. So there you go. This is what we've got in Sussex. Dorset's got Dirtle Door, and we have this cute little archway here. But I had to find it, and now I've got to figure out if it's worth photographing or not. I've got chalk absolutely everywhere. My first tip, if you're gonna come here, don't wear black. So it just so happened, at the same time I saw that photograph on the internet, somebody contacted me and they said, Ben, would you like to review the Lowepro Photosport AW3? And I looked at the specs and I thought, I don't really have a need for some sort of adventure sports bag. But then I thought, actually, this has got a feature on it which none of my other bags have. Plus, uh, I'll get into the details in a second, but this is not really a photography bag. This is primarily 
an activity and sports bag that also carries a camera. Now, if you've seen my previous video where I reviewed a KNF bag, similar sort of principle, but the KNF bag is much bigger and it will take a laptop. This is only 15 liters. This bag is designed for the nimble photographer. Anyway, the one feature that this bag has got that my other camera bags do not is the ability to carry a water pouch. You've probably seen this tube sticking out here. Uh, as a photographer, it's not something that I've ever sought after really but I do always take a bottle of water out with me because when I'm filming to camera if I start to get a bit dry that's it I can't film anymore. Most camera bags have got a pouch on the side this one's got one and some of my other camera bags have only got one and you either have to choose can I put my water bottle in it or can I put my tripod in it. Inside the back here if I unzip that you can see I've got a water pouch. This pouch and this bag will hold two litres of water which is way more than I need to carry, especially since two liters is gonna weigh two kilograms. So ideally, I don't actually have to carry that much weight around with me. The nice thing about having a water pouch like this is it distributes the weight. If you put one liter of water on one side of your bag, you start to feel it leaning to one side. This way, it's just evenly distributed and it's actually kind of like a nice cushion between you and the stuff in your bag. Obviously, this is not just a water carrying bag. Let me show you around. So essentially, the model number of this is low pro photo sport bp 15 litre aw3 and when i first took this out of the box i thought oh how cute you can never really tell how big something is on the internet and uh, i can't really get my head around how many liters of camera gear i own because you don't measure camera gear in liters do you as i've already mentioned this is designed for a very nimble photographer i've loaded this up to absolute capacity so what is filming me right now is a Canon EOS R with a 16 millimeter pancake lens. Very small setup and I've got the Rode Wireless Go here with a lav mic. So I've been able to bring a full frame camera and a wide angle lens and it's also sitting on a travel tripod which is the KNF one. I'll put a link to the video up here. So this bag will take a full frame camera although if you look at the specifications of it it promotes a crop sensor camera something like a, a Fuji or something a bit smaller. On the side of the bag you've got this dedicated um, camera cube and if I were to undo that velcro you'll see that this camera cube actually comes out of the bag this is the extent of the camera the safe camera area essentially and I've tried to put a full frame camera with a medium sized lens in it it does not fit so only buy this if you intend on having a very small camera setup otherwise you'll need to look for a different bag entirely but as I've proven today, this actually can take a lot of equipment. I've also got the DJI Mavic 2 Pro, which is quite a big drone. I've got the smart controller. The smart controller is about that big. That's taking up a lot of space. So the top half of this bag is taken up by my drone. Also on the side here, I've got a 360 camera. The tripod was sitting in the side pouch here, and then it was fastened on using these buckles here. I've got my phone, I've got my wallet in there, I've got my car keys and I've got a little snack in here. And that is the extent of what this bag can carry. And even though I've filled this bag up to absolute capacity, it's still very comfortable. You've got a handle up here, so if you just want to quickly move it around like so. And the reason that it's comfortable is because you've got the shoulder straps, you've got the chest restraint, and then you've also got a waist support with buckles, which have now got chalk all over it, so I can't actually photograph it anymore. But the good news is that I actually recorded some footage and took some photographs of this last weekend when I was also looking for the same caves. Inside the camera cube, it comes with a handful of Velcro dividers. Now, if you put a smaller camera in there, you could actually fit one camera and two lenses probably a spare battery and some memory cards, all in that one camera cube. Now it doesn't end there. The bag actually comes with quite a few accessories. I'll put a link to their website below so that you can see all of the shoulder straps and the clips and everything that comes with it. But essentially, if you didn't want the camera cube to be inside the bag because it, it disconnects as you saw earlier, then you can use that with a shoulder strap. Therefore, you're kind of gaining a very small camera bag. Also, you've got the option using some of these uh, mounts on the strap here they provide some clips for your camera should you not want to put your camera away inside the bag you can now hang your camera from the straps itself and if you're curious yes you can keep the camera over one of your shoulders and you can get access to your camera nice and easy really good uh, zips and finger grips which have now got chalk all over them ergonomically these straps are quite thin they're quite firm but on the basis that you can't actually put much stuff and weightiness 
it's actually very comfortable. So on the top of the lid, you've got a zip section, which I use to put my phone, but just to let you know that on the waist strap, there's also a zipped pouch there, which probably good for your phone. The top lid is held down by two buckles. And from here, it's got a little yellow tab. You can pull on that and you get access to the top pouch, which has got my drone and the remote and the car keys and my spare lens. That's just one complete open section. You'll be pleased to hear as well that the camera cube and the top section are separated by a Velcro base. It's a fabric with Velcro on it. And that means that if you were to say, spill some crumbs or something inside, it doesn't end up on top of your camera cube. So these are very much separate, but you could take it out if you wanted this to just be one complete open bag. And that's it for the main section. Once again, you just grab this orange tab, pull on that and you can cinch it. These straps here are actually for walking sticks, but they're also uh, quite handy for holding a tripod in place. As you can see here, I'm actually using the walking stick restraint to hold my 360 camera stick, but you could hold your tripod in place or walking sticks. On the front, you've got this elasticated section, which is, you can see here, my fingers is netted on the side and it's secure at the bottom so nothing will fall out. Secretly hidden underneath here, that's your waterproof pouch should you get caught out in wet weather. And that's it. It comes doesn't come with chalk on it. That's an optional extra. Uh, one thing that I have noticed uh, when photographing and videoing this, if you try and put it down, it doesn't ever stand upright. If you put it down, expect it to fall over on its side. You can see, even when it's empty, it still does this. It's because the back of it is quite a rigid base to it. I believe that this sells for 165 pounds at the time of filming on Lowpro's website. I'm not getting any commission, but I'll put a link in the description below. If you find it cheaper elsewhere, like on Amazon, then great. One thing to note, this water pouch does not come with it. I bought this on Amazon for 12 pounds. It will hold a two liter water pouch. Now that I've covered this bag in chalk, it really does look like I've used it for an adventure. So. If you've got any questions, let me know in the comments below. If you're thinking of coming down to this cave, I'll leave the What Three Words location in the description below. So what's my verdict on this archway? Yeah, at the moment, the archway over there is completely in shade because it's coming up for summertime and the sun is rising inland. But I think what I'll do is I'll come back in the winter when the sun is rising over the ocean and we'll probably get a nice looking shot of this. If you've got any questions, let me know in the comments below. Otherwise, thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, subscribe, hit the notification bell and I'll see you in the next video.